To the prairies of Western Canada, many peoples have come from crowded Europe, seeking new homes, new farming country, new freedom. Among the largest of these groups are the Ukrainians, who first came to Canada 50 years ago. Today, more than 300,000 Ukrainian Canadians devote their lives to their new country, and at the same time, honor the traditions which they have brought with them from their far-off homeland. For journeying to the new world, they found a mirror of their loved Ukraine in the vast Canadian spaces, the sunlit wheatlands of the prairies. Through the long winter months, their farms are locked under ice and snow. Winter for the Ukrainians in Canada is a time when they have leisure to recall the ceremonies of the old country. For at this Christmas season, when work in the fields is halted, and the farmers are busy around the barns and stables, the ritualistic drama of the year reaches its climax. The Ukrainians still follow the Julian calendar, inherited from Roman times, and celebrate Christmas on the 7th of January. Their two weeks holiday is gay with fine old songs, dances, and colorful traditions. In a fertile farmland near Winnipeg live the Pavlovskys, original settlers from the Ukraine, and their children and grandchildren who learn the new Canadian ways as well as the language of their fathers. Harry and Norman are helping with the preparations for the holiday feast. Their job is to chop and bring in the firewood for Mother's stove while she is busy making ready the special foods for the holy Christmas Eve supper. There are 12 different dishes for the 12 apostles, but the holy bread has particular significance. It is prepared with ancient ritual practices, painted with sweetened water, and regarded as sacred by the whole family. Emily, the young daughter, shares the holiday excitement. She too helps with all the preparations. Bobcha, the grandmother, came to Canada from the western Ukraine 40 years ago. Through all these years, she has preserved the customs of her birthplace. Grandfather brings in a large sheaf of wheat stalks, which represent the god of plenty, who has always fed and protected the family. The house has been beautifully cleaned, and the icons decorated with embroideries and gay flowers. Hay is spread on the table and straw under it. Each blade of hay represents an ancestor, and the place beneath the table, the manger where Christ was born. When all is ready, the holy bread must be brought first to the table. Grandfather kisses it as he puts it in the place of honor. The mother hides nuts in the hay for the children. It is supposed to be a great surprise, but everyone knows that it would not be Christmas without this custom. The children, eager for the meal to begin, rush to the window to look for the first star. When they see a star, they joyfully announce it to the family, and the meal can begin. Grandfather gives his blessing to the food and the family. The 12 special dishes of choice food represent everything that a farmer grows in his gardens and fields and what he catches in the nearby river. There is no meat in this meal. Grandfather is the family high priest. He begins the Christmas Eve supper by throwing a spoonful of kucha, wheat cooked with honey and poppy seed, to the ceiling. If a great deal sticks to the ceiling, it is an omen of a good crop of honey for the summer. The meal begins with a spoonful of kucha, 
which grandfather serves to everyone. Each Ukrainian holiday has its special cycle of songs. Many of these songs, like the rituals, have come down from pagan ceremonies when the sun was the supreme god. Ancient songs, formerly sung in honor of the sun god, are now a part of the heritage of Christmas carols. The family knows that soon the carolers will arrive to sing with them the beautiful old songs and share their Christmas joy. you on Christmas, wishing you all health. May the little Jesus bless all of you in this home with happiness and good things. May you celebrate this festival joyfully and live well until the next. Christ is born. The whole family takes part in the singing of the next carol. Carolers join with the family in finishing the supper. Afterwards, the children play in the straw under the table, hunting for the nuts which were hidden there for them. If they find a great many, good luck and bountiful crops will come to the family throughout the year. Outside, the moon shines softly on the village. Emily, who is old enough to think of marriage, runs out to the gate with her spoons. From the direction where the dogs bark, she knows that her lover will come. The animals in the stable share the Christmas feast. The master takes some choice hay and a bit of holy bread and wishes the animals contentment. This is the eve of great miracles. On this one night of the year, the animals are believed to have the power of speech and to speak among themselves of the past, the present, and the future. One by one, the members of the family go to bed. Bopcha leaves a dish of the sacred kucha for the spirits of the departed one. All across the prairies rise the domes and glittering crosses of Catholic and Greek Orthodox churches. And on Christmas Day, in Manitoba, as in the old country, the Ukrainians gather to follow the Orthodox ritual, 2,000 years old. The church, like the house, 
has been scrubbed and polished and decorated for the holiday. The church choir has practiced the carols in preparation for the high mass in which every member of the community participates. Bareheaded men and women in tall fur hats kneel and kiss the icon. The doors guarding the altar are called the king's doors. According to tradition, only the king and the priest may enter by them. The old carols embody more than a thousand years of the spiritual experience of the Ukrainian race. service continues and ends with the carol, Christ is Born. Inside the church, the men and women chat about farm gossip and about the Christmas festivities in the Ukrainian tongue, which is the language of daily life. After Christmas Day, the straw from beneath the dinner table is carried out to the front gate, formed into a cross, and burned. This custom goes back to ancient times when Ukrainians still worshipped pagan gods. Thus, the pagan symbolism of the hay is transferred to the Christian symbolism of the cross. Everyone in the family, as well as the stock in the barns, is thought to be protected from illness by this rite. times the cattle were driven through the fire to purge them from disease. Even today the children leap over the cross to purify themselves in the flames.
On New Year's Day, the little boys shower bopcha with seeds of grain to ensure good wheat, a custom born of a farming people's need for rich crops and abundance through the coming year. river in the piercing cold, the priest and the villagers are cutting great blocks of ice two feet thick. For on the morning of January 19th, the Ukrainians celebrate the baptism of Christ in the Jordan River. And as in the frozen winter of the Ukraine, so in Manitoba they build their cross of ice for Jordan Day. ready for the Jordan Day ceremony. is the water. Everyone carries away a bottle full of holy water to bless his home. But gaiety and color and song are as much a part of the Ukrainians' lives as their religious festivals. In farmhouses and in the big community halls of the towns, Ukrainian Canadians dance and sing as their holiday season of Christmas comes to its end, rejoicing in the land which they have long learnt to call their own.